Hello and welcome to our Tech Tuesday web seminar about new features you can expect in our server drives and drive controller. I'm Tobias Wenecker and I'm working as a product manager for our KEB industrial drives. Since 2004 I'm working for KEB. Since approximately three years I'm working as a product manager. Yeah, thank you Tobias and my name is Tobias Grabbe. I'm uh, head of R&D um, software group here at KB in Bantrup. Um, I've been employed at KB uh, for about 15 years now and um, uh, after a short trip into the world of functional safety I have taken over the um, um, head of software position um, in November last year. Okay, thank you Tobias. Okay, let's start with a small overview about our topics for the next minutes. At first I'd like to introduce KB Automation and of course a small introduction about our KB F6 and S6 drives. Then I will start with an overview about the general software features and three examples about currently implemented software features in motion control, motor control and field pass communication. After this, um, I will hand over to Tobias. Uh, he will show you some examples about new features you can expect in the future. For example, Profi Drive or the CAN Cross functionality. Okay, KB Automation, who we are. We are an independent family owned medium sized company and we are based in Bahntrup and all around the world we have got five production plants. We have got a broad portfolio for automation solutions. Brakes, motors, gears, of course drive controllers, HMIs, software solutions and software for remote maintenance and digital solutions. Of course we are characterized by a higher vertical range of manufacture here in Bantrup as well in our production plants in China for example or in America in the United States and we are work in a close relationship with our customers in hardware topics and of course in drive controller software functionalities. The KEB CombiVert F6 drive controller which has got a range, a power range from uh, 750 watt up to 450 kilowatt is our multi-purpose drive and it's characterized by functional consistency and a high scalability. The time reducing for sampling the integra integration in a machine is a uh, time effort aspect in this case. Of course we are uh, taking care about a compact design in developing our KEB F6 drive especially in the medium and the high power range because we would like to save space and of course our customer like to save space in their control cabinets. Optionally we have got uh, some matching accessories available, filters, chokes, brake resistors and much more. The KB CombiVert S6 servo drive uh, is coming out with a book format for space saving aspects in control cabinets and uh, Field bus communication protocols, Ethercat, Profinet, Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, PowerLang, Varan, and of course CAN. As well, the F6 drive has got the same field bus communication protocols. Also, we are uh, able to run various encoders, different motors like asynchronous motors, synchronous motors, synchronous reluctance motors, IPM high-speed torque motors and of course our KB own motors and third-party motors as well. So this was a short introduction into the KB CombiVert F6 and S6 hardware part. Now I like to introduce our um, general drive software features. Uh, of course we have got a multi-purpose drive series and uh, this uh, yeah, software landscape is of course powerful and at the same time very flexible. Uh, the points showed uh, that we have got a main software functionality with different blocks in our KB drive. Each group like motion control or I.O. function has got a lot of um, functionalities which the customer can program with our CombiVis 6 tool for the PC or the CombiVis mobile tool for the mobile devices. 
Today I pick up three examples of released software functionalities in the area of um, motion control, motor control and of course our current implemented communication possibilities. The first example is about motion control and the feature braking with transistor handling. With the latest software version release, the rollout of this powerful and of course helpful protection function for our own KEB sub-mounted braking resistor is released. Um, our experience in high dynamic applications uh, where brake transistor and braking transistor handling uh, shows that this handling is very important for the success of a process and of course at the end the machine of our customers. The sub-mounted braking resistor protection is of course an advantage for our customers and of course the application. We have got the pre-setting of all important model variables. The braking resistor data handling and setting is not necessary anymore uh, for your own programming. So the less error is of course a key fact in this part. And the application and braking process can run into a thermal physical limit of the resistor and of course the mounted braking resistor from KEB. How does it work? Uh, we have implemented uh, yeah, a function and uh, this function is valid for the KB CombiVert F6 drives with sub-mounted braking resistors and internally we have got a software uh, where we can calculate uh, the power and the temperature inside our KB control board software. The software implements a terminal validated uh, resistance model of the resistor and uh, different warning levels or the response of the warning levels and the temperature can be characterized by parameters. Of course, at the end, we have got uh, a high dynamic um, view about our applications we solve with our customers. For example, injection molding machines and process technology machines like blowers, for example. Now I switch over to an example of our motor control functionalities. Motor control is a block uh, which is very important for our customers. At first I like to start with an example again. Um, we need of course uh, a constant speed and a high speed um, for process handling like turbo blowers is very important to have a constant and stable air in the pressure conditions in the system. Uh, the second example of a motor control is a constant torque at a plastification unit for optimal end product specifications. For example, small components like small plastic interfaces for mobile devices. The dead time compensation is a key fact in our uh, point of view to have an uh, optimized uh, performance at the shaft. Of course, this optimized uh, performance on the shaft is state-of-the-art, but uh, we see with our customers that the end result about uh, constant torque or ton constant speed is very, very important to have a good end product. The core target uh, in this software functionality of dead time compensation is to have the highest shaft performance, and of course, uh, we like to compensate uh, negative physical drive controller output stage distortion and uh, the output voltage handling. With the latest uh, software implementation, uh, we continuously develop um, new functionality with this dead time compensation modes. And at the end, uh, the new factory and uh, new IDENT IGPT mode uh, rise up with some advantages in this characterization. Especially the IDENT IGPT model is an advantage for overall designs, that says for um, closed loop applications with or without encoder or uh, classical V2F applications. As well, high speed applications like turbo blowers can affect uh, with this kind of dead time compensation mode. Of course, this mode is available with or without our KEB 
filter technology. I think the next topic, the communication topic, is a uh, hidden champion in the drive technology. What does it mean? The field path communication and of course the functional safety communication is, uh, yeah, in my own words, the door to industry 4.0. The KEB drives F6 and S6 offers a flexible communication interface which can open as a standard the real-time Ethernet interface uh, options like Ethercat, Profinet and many more. And uh, as well we have got a diagnostic interface where the PLC or the customer devices can interact uh, via Ethernet over Ethercat for example. Of course, in the communication block, uh, the drive assist, uh, the process data handling via our tool Combivus 6. And uh, yeah, the functional safety communication over the profiles, functional safety over Ethercat or ProfiSafe uh, can uh, help to get interaction to the customer PLC. Of course, each communication interface has got advantages and disadvantages for each application and each machine builder product. Also, the drive itself supports customers with several information parameters to have the opportunity for clever data management. That's the last item, the door to Industry 4.0. Of course, the door is um, yeah, valid or open with flexible management of the drive parameters itself for the industry 4.0 tasks, for the dynamic drive, drive status exchange and the static drive information exchange. Okay, so far from my side. So now I hand over to my colleague Tobias from R&D to give you an outlook what kind of features you can expect from KEB in the future. Yeah, thank you Tobias. And uh, thank you for your introduction and the uh, brief overview about our drive product. And um, uh, it's my pleasure now to um, uh, take you into the world of uh, so, so far unreleased new features, while Tobias has just introduced ourselves to um, a, com uh, a common set of already available features. Um, so uh, what, as we uh, just heard, F6 and S6 drives are uh, available on the market. But uh, my first point is that does um, uh, not mean that they are out of development. Um, continuously in, um, extending um, our firmware and our functionalities, adding functions um, is one of our main goals. It's uh, part of our DNA and um, our main goal together with product management, sales and not least our customers um, is one of our main goals, ex extending customer experience. Um, so that is basically what my job is about, overtake um, ideas into new software features um, together with my team. So um, what I've brought with me today is um, a, short, a short set of uh, features that uh, I consider as really interesting and um, uh, could be somewhat uh, some kind of game changes for our customers' machinery. Um, so currently um, we are in a worldwide supply chain crisis and um, this, um, this situation is um, bringing back up the, the topic of um, inter-exchangeability of industrial components. Um, and what's helping our customers a lot is the use the usage of standardized protocols and profiles um, for the industrial components. And that is obviously also including the drives. Um, we've been offering um, um, a certain set of field buses, uh, stand which are obviously standardized. ProfiSafe was already explained and, um, and uh, talked about. Um, not losing EtherCAT, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, in the same way, we uh, are focusing on standards in terms of um, drive and drive application profiles, such as um, the CIA 402 drive profile, with all its sub-flavors and, uh, um, and and modules. And and last not least, that is obviously also true for all the safety 
um, communication protocols like FSOE and Profisafe, which we just recently released. So um, part of this already um, uh, quite long list is now going to become uh, Profidrive. We, we decided to introduce Profidrive into our drives um, as another communication interface standard for, um, uh, for our drives in order to make it more easier for our customers to, um, to adopt their designs onto KB drives and um, to make the design in phase for new machinery and for new applications as easy as possible. Um, obviously, that is um, typically um, uh, the uh, a main point when we are speaking about Profinet applications and um, Siemens-based controllers, but it's not limited to that. Um, we are currently um, in, an, uh, in an evaluation phase on uh, how we, um, we will uh, realize that implementation exactly. Um, uh, I can't tell that much that it is not a one-on-one -on -one mapping um, of the existing state machine states, for example, of CIA402 um, and, um, and the objects. Um, so there is still work in project, but that is something that I think um, you can look forward to. <clears throat> um, the second idea I have brought with me today is um, uh, somewhat a new communication principle. Um, so what is the main goal and the application? The idea is there are also um, more or less simple drive applications with or without a field bus connection um, that may consist of a lot more than one or two drives. And um, uh, that can be talk sharing applications or uh, cascades of machinery modules, um, uh, for instance, in conveyance applications. Um, and a lot more that you can think of. And uh, our answer to, to this um, uh, setup of applications is um, the CAN cross communication. Um, the idea is to have a drive built in CAN master, which enables the drives to um, communicate directly with each, with each other and um, to help um, improving the application's performance a lot by that. Um, I have brought a few examples and few more details with me on that. Um, basic idea is um, for the con or the concept is that there is one drive realize a, uh, realizing a CAN master and um, a subset of other drives. Currently, there are up to ten drives supported, um, but they that might be extended in the future um, uh, as operating as standard CAN slaves with. Um, uh, which gives us the opportunity to exchange several and arbitrary uh, process data between those communication partners. Um, in the easiest way, this is a drive, or this, all of these drives do not have a field bus connection at all, but they are driven via digital inputs and uh, fixed values, for instance. Uh, but they are um, depending on each other in terms, for instance, of actual speed or actual talk and um, have an application where one drive is following another, for instance. Um, the basic idea behind that is that we want to keep things simple and flexible, even if there is no PLC around, but that is not limited to that. It, uh, there also could be a PLC around. The benefits of our idea for the CAN cross communication is um, a high level of flexibility. Um, it is um, uh, a freely configurable communication layer, so um, including multicasting scenarios where one um, communication partner is talking to, um, to more than one um, uh, slave device, can be master to slaves, can be also slave to slaves, um, with um, with a uh, whole with the whole variation of um, of communication objects that were made available, um, we do have another um, big advantage in terms of reaction times because um, in terms of communication errors or uh, also different application states, um, it is possible to react very quickly, namely directly uh, handled by the by the drive onto new 
application statuses. So that is um, a high reaction, a very short reaction time there. Um, we included an error monitoring um, that is not limiting itself to communication errors, as I already said, but also is including um, um, handling errors of the application. And last but not least, it is also um, possible to include even third-party devices as long as they are able to speak CAN. And in the very end, it still can. Um, so that means we have all the well-known CAN communication principles and um, side elements of the protocol available, that is including sync generation and consumption, that is including NMT, that is including emergency telegrams, heartbeat consumer and producer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we are um, still have the well-known uh, baud rate of, um, that is currently implemented in the generation six drives of one megabaud available solely, if you want, solely for the interdrive communication. And there's even more coming. Um, we, can, we can think about scenarios where the communication level is not limited to the drive communication level, to, to the CAN cross communication level, but it is also thinkable that that communication is um, introduced below a high, prior, uh, um, a high ordered field bus connection. What does it mean in, uh, in detail? Um, the CAN cross communication master can also be um, a normal standard, uh, let's say, EasyCAT slave with maybe um, a, a higher cycle time, for instance, and um, to use the uh, and using the benefits of the CAN cross communication, maybe with the direct communication with the reaction time advantages that I talked about earlier, um, uh, below that high level field bus connection. As Tobias already said, um, we are not limited to any kind of field bus there, um, but this is um, still work in progress. Um, we are currently um, uh, developing ideas on how that is going to be presented to you. Um, that was what I wanted to bring up to you and want, wanted to introduce to you. Thank you, and um, that leaves us with the um, uh, with the idea that I want uh, to deliver to you from R and D. Um, KB is always in motion. We are moving forward all the time, and these were were only two um, examples that we are currently working on. Many more is um, is going to follow as well. Um, for instance, we are. Um, working on um, extending our auto-tune um, uh, options and possibilities. Um, there are a lot of internal projects ongoing and um, look out for um, the next features that are coming up. And I hand it back over to Tobias for the conclusion. Okay. And, um, Many thanks, Tobias. Okay, uh, yeah, we are connected to the end. So that means uh, a small conclusion from my side. Of course, uh, Tobias, uh, give us an outlook to the uh, next upcoming ideas and uh, functionalities in our KB drives. But uh, the collection of these attributes uh, are valid for the generation six, which are currently released and currently released with a valid software version. That means uh, the digital twin, for example, is also possible in the range of uh, the KEB uh, software. And the conclusion itself uh, means that uh, we are, of course, market oriented, of course, customer oriented to extend our software functionalities in the range of the customer requirements. Of course, uh, the bus communications and field bus possibilities and safety possibilities uh, are communicative at the end. Of course, we are innovative uh, from uh, the R&D side to adapt our software to the next level of functionality and flexible and of course, a lot of functionalities and features are pre-configured from our KEB plant. Okay, um, 
I just uh, like to give you some uh, further notes about the digital twin. The digital twin is of course our uh, possibility to add yeah, the software functionality of our KB firmware and we call it so far KB firmware simulation model and uh, if you are interested in this kind of uh, possibilities which is also a topic of our software R&D uh, developments please uh, have a look at the latest uh, web seminar from uh, my colleague Manuel Brose from R&D and myself about the digital twin and the KEB firmware simulation model. Okay, thank you very much from my side and yeah, keep in touch and uh, all the best for you and your applications and your machines. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.